Now, there are some other challenges that that uh, that come up when we're talking about general strikes. Uh, one of the major challenges is just bridging the divide within the ranks. Right, there is a lot of divide within the working class ranks. There's white collar, blue collar, middle class, lower class, and this exists in just the general way that we treat each other. Right, classism in America is based on the type of job that you have. I mean, think about it. Do you really treat the fast food employee the same way that you treat, I don't know, a civil engineer? Like every time I go into a McDonald's, which has been uh, three times in my life, and uh, they are the greatest regrets that I've had uh, in my entire life. Uh, and I, and I have tried Crystal Pepsi on purpose once. You guys said I did that. <laughs> and, the 90s and, were magic. Yeah, the 90s were magic. And, and I gotta say, going into a McDonald's was significantly worse. <laughs> I, I will drink a case of Crystal Pepsi if I never have to set foot into a McDonald's again. Uh, but, but every time I go in there, there's always someone screaming at the kid behind the counter. Right, there's always someone going, how fucking hard is it to make a goddamn burger? Well, we don't do that to a civil engineer that has to design bridges, right? We don't, we don't go out there and yell, how hard is it to prop up the infrastructure of a growing economy, you piece of shit? Like, we don't... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God.
<laughs> we, we we're just divided in, in, in these levels of jobs that we have too right we, every 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 corporate job that i've had there's always these weird tiers of jobs there's entry level there's managers and then there's like a senior manager and then a project manager where the fuck that even means i've never <laughs> But here's the thing, managers are part of the working class. The story of Henry Frick proves that. You know, Andrew Carnegie put Henry Frick in charge of the Homestead uh, Steel Mill right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Frick was the face of, of slash wages and worker turmoil, despite him just following Carnegie's orders. And when Frick built a giant wooden fence around the mill, they nicknamed it Fort Frick, not Fort Carnegie. Frick also hired the Pinkertons to attack the striking workers, right? And Carnegie now used his position of power to coerce the governor to call the National Guard into Homestead. But Frick ended up being the face of it because he was there on the ground dealing with everybody. Frick was the face that everybody saw. By the end of it, when the guard attacked the strikers and the townspeople, it wasn't seen as an attack from Carnegie. It was seen as an attack by Frick, who was the manager of this mill. Every time that Andrew Carnegie went out into the public, he would make these pro-union speeches, but then he would go behind the scenes and literally talk about how he wanted unions to be killed. He wanted union leaders to be killed out on the streets, right? And, and Frick is seen as such a terrible person that we use his name as a child substitute curse word, right? <laughs> yeah, we say Frick. <laughs> Yeah, we say frick instead of fuck. Frick. That's, frick. that's how much we, yeah, that's how much we don't like this guy. And I'm not, I'm not here defending Henry Frick, right? Uh, what I'm saying is the man should have sided with the strikers because Andrew Carnegie sold him out. And Carnegie was so delusional to his wealth that on his deathbed, he said that he wishes that his friend, Henry Frick, was there with him. So when, this, when word of this got to Frick, Frick responded and he said, tell Mr. Carnegie, I will see him soon in hell where we are both going. Boom, that's a mic drop moment right there. Yep. <laughs> But, he, but, but that, that is proof that, you know, these managers need to be on our side. These managers are part of the working class.
All right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the program. I hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, to do a little check in here. Uh, we're, we're, we're still streaming on Odyssey. I figured it out, you guys. Very excited. I fucking figured out how to, to get uh, stream on Odyssey and, and do it right. I was I was a little concerned about that uh, today that I uh, that I would kind of screw something up, but I didn't. We're live on Odyssey. Uh, if if you're watching over on Odyssey, hello, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. If you're unfamiliar with this, uh, we, I, we I hang out and I yell into a microphone about uh, shit that uh, corporate media won't cover. That's that's what we do on this program. And I encourage you guys to to leave comments in the chat because uh, I will always uh, check them out. Uh, and and at the end of each segment, I, I read them aloud um, and, and we kind of have a discussion, a conversation. Uh, same thing over on the uh, the rock fins. We got cynical girl. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, over over on the rock fins there so uh yeah very excited to be streaming on odyssey and rockfin cutting the cord from youtube uh because uh, fuck those people they're they haven't they haven't fucking helped my channel and it seems like rockfin and odyssey actually want to help my channel so i'm gonna i'm gonna go there <laughs> uh Coming in early, gave you guys the two extra minutes, two extra minutes of uh, nonsensical banter. That's that's the Chris Moen promise there. Uh, but I'm, I'm having an all right day, you know, uh, a little bit of a slower start to today than yesterday. But it, I think it all it all worked out fine. I got to figure out how to sync my phone to my car, which is it, I know it's like that's that's been the that's been the thing that's been bugging me all day. I can't figure out what what the issue is. Um, I don't know if I'm not doing it properly or I got a new phone cause I had to get a new phone, uh, because the phone that I've had for like five years started to fail. Uh, and, uh, and of course like it has to like, I have to get it all resyncing to everything. And every time that you try to use Bluetooth, uh, all hell starts breaking loose. So, so, so that was a portion of my day, uh, of, of, a, a mildly frustrating portion of my day. It, it'll, it'll be fine. I'll figure it out. It's just, you know, I got to be on the phone with customer support again, and that's always fucking annoying. Uh, but other than that, I, I, I enjoyed some, I enjoyed some nice tea that I made uh, today. I, I, I felt pretty good about that. I've been having some odd stomach issues on and off the last couple days. So I've been trying to um, like eat better, uh, because I, because I, I at the end of the day, I tend to get stoned and kind of eat some junk food, and sometimes I, I eat a bunch and then I go right to bed, and I think that creates some problems because I'm in my thirties. Like in my twenties, I could do that, and it was just like whatever, it's fine. I'm, I'm like this. I'm in, I'm invincible. I, my body's made out of concrete, but, but now it's like my body's made out of silly putty, and it's just like no, we're just gonna collapse on ourselves, and that's. So I'm trying to eat better. So I'm like drinking a little bit more tea, you know, doing less caffeine, um, trying to just have some natural energy. I still drink coffee in the morning. Uh, I am, I am a, a, a miserable fucking wretch without that, but you know, trying to stay in shape. Um, I got some errands to run this evening and then I'm going to come back and try to do my stretches, uh, just, just a day to kind of do some stretches, do some body work exercises, you know, um, and uh and and relax a little bit uh try try not to eat too too much junk food that's that's always the goal a uh, bit of exciting news i want to i want to reiterate this point if you are in columbus ohio next monday june 14th i will be at the uh home run for assange um protest organized protest uh, Misty Winston put uh, helped put that together. Andrew Zygman helped put that together. Uh, it is going to be Julian Assange's dad, and uh, I believe his half brother is the is the official um, status relation relation. That's the word. Uh, yeah, it's it's not his stat. Why would it be his, his status, Chris? You're an idiot. Okay, uh, but I will be there June June fourteenth. Uh, in Columbus, Ohio, I am ma I'm making the journey over. I'm going to try to document as much as 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 possible. 
put that together. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing a set, a a a Assange centric set, which is very exciting. Uh, I gotta I gotta look over some material I've written about Assange and and construct like a ten to fifteen minute piece that actually fucking makes sense. Uh, that isn't uh, uh, you know just me kind of psycho babbling and and cursing in front of the Columbus uh, rotunda. Is that capital? The big it's got a dome. That building. Uh, I think it's got a dome. I actually don't know. I actually don't know what the Columbus Capitol actually looks like. I've never uh, particularly been there. Every every time I go to Columbus, I usually try to perform at Cafe Kerouac, which is this weird little bookstore, coffee shop slash music venue that exists there. Um, and it's always it's always fun. Columbus is a tough town for me to like get some folks out sometimes because it's a college centric town and all that. But uh, most of the time I've been to Columbus has been a really fun time, and I'm and and I'm hoping for the same. <laughs> I might get to give out business cards at this thing too. Get folks fucking following me and shit. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm just excited to, to to be performing in front of like live humans again. That's that's pretty cool. Not that the virtual stuff and the live stream hasn't been fun because it is, or else I wouldn't continue doing it. That's just part of my personality. Is like if I stop enjoying doing if I if if something is not bringing me joy, if something is not something that I want to be doing. Um, then, then I, I, I made a pact with myself a, a long time ago that I should not do things that don't bring me some form of happiness, some form of, uh, you know, uh, joy in my life. So, it, you know, if I didn't enjoy doing this stuff, I, I just wouldn't, <laughs> it's, I, I, I don't know how else to, to, to really put it. I, I, I don't do things that I don't enjoy. I don't, I don't, I'm not around people that I don't enjoy being around. That's, um, just crazy to me uh, that that we that we're around uh, people that we don't like. So, uh, with all of that said and done, um, I'm going to kick things off. Let's 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 put this stream into high gear, and and talk about the topics that we're going to be talking about today. So, I want to talk about Bellingcat. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bellingcat. It's another. I, I view I view this thing as like a hipster newspaper, right? Like similar to Vice was kind of like this hipster, like look at I'm all I'm so edgy. I'm gonna say fuck in my article. Just got you guys see that? I said fuck in my article. That's because the author of this article fucks. So the author of this article gets to say fuck because we're Vice. Like it's I look at Bell and Cat as as one of those kind of newspapers right they're they're very like bro -y and aggro and shit <laughs> but um there's a, a great mint press news article it's a it's a little old uh, of a mint press news article but it's been something that I've, I've wanted to talk about for a while um because i you know people people apparently people like bellingcat and and you know, with corporate media being what it is, it needs some fresh, cool faces. And Bellingcat kind of being in that uh, genre of like cool hipster media of like, yeah, we wear suits, but I do my tie a little bit. And yeah, my suit jacket doesn't match my pants. What? You know, like that kind of that's the, that's all I hear. And anytime like I look, I, I don't particularly pay attention to exactly all the shit that Bellingcat puts out. Uh, nor do I pay attention to everything that like corporate media puts out. I, I will, I will pay attention to it every, every so often just to see uh, what, what they're saying and, and what the, the corporate narrative is or, or, or really what the intelligence community's narrative is. Um, so I know how to debunk it. I know how to form my counter arguments, right? Uh, you got to know what the enemy is saying, what the enemy is up to. It's uh, is that Sun Tzu's art of war? I kind of feel like that's Sun Tzu's art of war. Um, but you know, that's that's the the direction that I'm uh, that I'm taking. So I do pay attention to those things. I read I read conservative shit too, just so I know what conservatives are are uh, are being fed. So I know like when I meet my conservative friends and they go, "Oh, you want to defund the police, huh?" Well. Get ready to be butt fucked and robbed all the time because that's what's going to happen in a non police state America. And it's just like, what are you taught? You know, I need to know what what to argue, like where where the points that I'm going to argue are. 
Uh, but this article uh, from uh, Mint Press News, Alan McCloyd wrote the article, uh, great, great author, Alan McCloyd. Uh, he wrote about how Bellingcat is basically funneling um, former intelligence agency operate operators, former intelligence agents, I guess would be called, they would be called, uh, they're funneling them into corporate mainstream media, which means the corporate mainstream media is getting the narrative of, um, you know, uh, the intelligence community. So, so basically it's this, it's this pathway to, uh, just, a news organization run by the CIA. <laughs> that's that's what corporate media is becoming, and Bellingcat is helping them do that, right? So he talks about a bunch of this stuff, like, and he debunks a lot of shit because he debunks a lot of the 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 sort of uh, media excitement around Bellingcat, and he talks about that. He, that's that's how he opens the article, you know, uh, and he talks about Elliot Higgins, who is who is the quote citizen journalist. And founder of uh, of Bellingcat and uh, at the Huffington Post wrote this fluff piece about him, uh, about how he saw what was going on in Syria, and saw you know how Assad was uh, was gassing his own people. Oh my God! It's not like the United States doesn't do that all the time with tear gas, which is banned by the Geneva Conventions, but we use that on protesters all the time, and no one has waged a war against us. But. Yeah, no, Elliot Higgins was like, bah, th this guy in a vaguely brown country is gassing his own people, probably, maybe, I don't know. Well, I should sit on my couch and and look up some articles written by some CIA spooks and then and then summarize them, but in my own words. So so basically basically he's he wrote a book report for the CIA on a blog. And that became Bellingcat. <laughs> but kind of, I mean, that's basically what he did. He sat on his couch and and Huffington Post is going on and on about how great he is that he was on his couch and he and he solved the, the whole crisis in Syria and how Assad is this awful person that fucking, you know, um, gasses his own people and destroyed the country. Uh, you know, like, what? Like, you didn't go there? And they and then they claim themselves to be investigative journalists. That's the other big thing, right? So they're citizen journalists. They claim that they're citizen journalists. They're just average, you know, run of the mill dudes, right? Elliot Higgins is a schlubby kind of dude. He doesn't even own a fedora. He's never even seen a fedora. It's top hats or nothing for Elliot Higgins. But they claim that he's an investigative journalist. Well, how can you be an investigative journalist without going to the place? that you're trying to investigate. I don't claim to be an investigative journalist because I'm not. What I do is commentary uh, on the news, on the, on, on the topics that uh, you know uh, corporate media won't cover. I, I do not claim to be an investigative journalist because I am not. I can kind of put some pieces together. You, you know, like that's, I, I use critical thinking skills and humor. And that's like, I'm not going out there being like, as an investigative journalist, comedian, citizen, activist, that would, that would be insane. Everybody would be like, what are you talking about? You know, uh, Fiorella Isabel from the Convo Couch, she's over, she's in Peru right now covering the election of what's going on down there. You know, to see if there's anything fraudulent going on, seeing there, if there's any sort of backdoor ele election manipulation going on. That's an investigative journalist. Greg Palace went down to Georgia and discovered that there was some foul play in Georgia that knocked a bunch of black voters off the rolls. That's an investigative journalist right there. But this dude sat on a couch, ate some cheesy puffs, drank a little soda, fucking summarized the CIA report, added his own embellishments, and then was like, citizen investigative journalist. I made a business card that says that. I made a business card that said Czar of America, but that doesn't make me a czar of fucking shit. So just by that alone, I think we can disprove the fact that the Bellingcat has nothing to do with investigative journalism. But he's also not a citizen journalist, right? Because... A citizen journalist w would be someone like Fiorella, someone like Greg Palace. That's like, okay, I'm taking it upon myself to go dig around, to, to go do the investigation and to learn the truth and, and relay it to the people. That's 
really that's also what a fucking journalist does so like pretty much every journalist that exists in america is fucking citizen a journalist this dude is is not even close because uh between 2016 and 2019 he was a senior executive for the atlantic council which has connections to nato and was resp was telling facebook like what they should shadow ban and what they should censor on their platform they controlled what people got to see on facebook right that's that's the atlantic council and he was part of that between 2016 and 2019 right and those were around the time that facebook was doing narrative control around the time that the atlantic council was in cahoots with facebook was when he was a senior executive of the atlantic council when facebook deleted 800 both left and right independent news media sites with no warning with no flags with no whatever elliot higgins was part of that the guy that created bell and cat was part of 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 a fucking think tank partnered with facebook to get rid of 800 independent news organizations without warning and then all of a sudden he comes up with his own quote independent media organization that parrots the narratives of the intelligence community. So Atlantic Council also um, its board of directors included Henry Kissinger, Condi Rice, Colin Powell, and seven former cia directors i mean how can we how, th this guy didn't come out and and blow the whistle on the atlantic council to be like hey here's some shady shit i saw at the atlantic council by the way i'm launching an independent news organization it, no he just came out of the atlantic council and created this news organization and the first thing he did is talk about syria and parrot cia narratives for, from syria state department narratives from syria and then has basically continued that trend going forward you're not independent you you are you are the propaganda paper for the intelligence community he has experience in narrative control he works with war bunkers in the intelligence agencies so that's why in their paper in bellingcat uh very boldly said that we need to overthrow nicolas maduro in venezuela who was legally elected in an election uh that election observers said was better than america's including jimmy carter and when they were like well what do you think of uh american elections and they were like let's let me show you a photo of what we think of American elections. And it was just a dumpster on fire because that's what American elections are. They're dumpster fires. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, he was, uh, he's funded. Well, one of his, one of his donors is, is Nicholas is Maduro's opposition or one of Maduro's oppositions uh thor halverson which is a which is like a very badass name for an awful awful person uh who who is advocating for the illegal overthrowing of a legally elected leader of a sovereign country because we don't like their politics because they're socialists and they take care of their people better than america does even even with economic sanctions nicolas maduro was was feeding his people and giving them UBI and making sure that nobody would like be destitute and homeless in his country. Even with American sanctions, he was able to do that. Could you imagine how much he could have done without, without American sanctions? They also got money from the fake humanitarian organization, the National Endowment for Democracy, which has nothing to do with democracy because it's basically a front for the CIA to run their coups. They're the organization that comes out and goes, oh, oh, oh. The torment that these socialist governments put on their people, and really the, the torment is coming from economic sanctions imposed by capitalist America. 
And then they go, well, this guy is the real leader. And then everybody goes, who the fuck is this guy? And they're like, this is the guy we found. And he's going to do everything we tell him to. But he's the real leader of Venezuela. Or insert Latin American country name here. Yeah, but they're funded. Oh, yeah, but they're independent, right? They're independent news organization. Independent news organizations don't get money from think tanks or the intelligence community or from war profiteers who also fund Bellingcat. <laughs> independent news or like this, this is an independent. I would say this is probably an independent news organization, even though it's it's just me. Uh, and I am f funded by people, like right? average regular viewers. That's that's who funds this shit. It's not, I'm not getting funded by the fucking National Endowment for Democracy. <laughs> It'd be weird if I was. It honestly would be weird if I was. Uh, but Bellingcat is a bunch of journalists that start in the intelligence community. They leave, they join Bellingcat, and then they do such a, quote, good job. Uh, they move on to other organizations, right? There's been a bunch of them that moved on to the Washington Post, New York Times, BBC, NPR. You know, it's just like the 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 laundry list of fucking corporate media organizations. That's where they go to, and that becomes narrative control because then they can lock in. You know, it's it, like it, it it would be crazy if somebody worked for the CIA or the NSA or the FBI or the State Department or the Pentagon or whatever for 20 some odd years, retired from there and didn't keep in touch with anybody at all and wasn't on the pulse of what's going on in their industry. Like even when you even if I was like if, if I if I had a full fledged career in graphic design and I retired, I would still keep up with what's going on in graphic design. It's just like that's a, that's also just basic psychology. That's just what you've known for so long. That's been a part of your life. You know, that's 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 been one third of your day every day for 20 years. Supposedly, ten, you know, 10. And then all of a sudden you retire and you're not going to cut like you're, I mean, I'm sure you take a month off or whatever, but I'm pretty sure you'll come right back to it. So one of these people I got to, I, I wanted to kind of highlight uh, was was somebody named Giancarlo Fiorella. He ran an opposition blog called In Venezuela from Canada uh, and then basically praised a domestic terrorist in Venezuela and said that he's a hero, right? And then all corporate media was parroting the same thing. This guy, like, blew up a uh, government building and... You know, probably hurt a bunch of people, and this guy and and Giancarlo Fiorella was calling him like a hero and shit like that. He now works for BBC, right? Like this guy has ties to anti-Venezuelan opposition, and now he works for the BBC, which means that the BBC narrative is also going to be anti Nicolas Maduro. And BBC is going to fall in line with what the CIA says or what the NSA says. Right. And this is a, this is a, this is a, a, a government run, a state run news organization in a different country that has hired a former intelligence agent from, I guess, Canada. So maybe it won't be the United States intelligence, agency, but Canadian intelligence agency, which I assume exists and probably has, very similar thoughts and ideas as the American CIA. <laughs> but they were, they were, you know, this, this hipster journalism is going to be used to pacify the American populace to be okay with more war. Right. That's why, that's why the, 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 the narrative uh, around Syria is that Assad is an awful person that gassed his own people, even though that's been debunked several different times by journalists like Vanessa Bealey, Eva Bartlett, Aaron Mate. Like, so Bellingcat just, just kind of funnels those people into that. Everything about Bellingcat is uh, kind of, it, it, it is a fuck you to what real journalism is. Everything about Bellingcat is that, right? Um, 
even their logo, their their logo is an upside down question mark, right? So like if you used the question mark as your logo, like let's say I, I have a background in design, right? So like if you used that, a stylized, cool looking fucking question mark and that was your logo, it's not even a style. It's like a fucking basic typewriter font question mark. And that's what they use as their logo. It's it's very it's not great um, from a design perspective. I think the concept is interesting, but I mean you could have. But that's the point, right? Like, if you're if you are a if you are a news organization, if you're a journalism company, um, that parrots State Department narratives, CIA narratives, all that sort of stuff. You want something to look like it's a government thing, but you also need it to look cool, fun, and hip. So you flip the question. Oh, it's an upside down. What? Upside down question mark? Oh, you crazy. What the fuck? You know, like it gives you that impression of like, these people are off the chain. They're so dead. They flipped a question mark upside. Can you believe it? Like it said, bullshit hipster thing of like, we're going to be subversive, but you know, our subversive is turning punctuation on its head, literally. But it's signaling that they don't actually care about critical thinking or the big question. They flipped it upside down. They they perverted it. They 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 flipped it on its axis. If it was a cool stylized question mark, that would be interesting because that still signals that we are asking the big questions. We are critical thinkers. But they did this upside down thing to be like, yeah, no, we're we're flipping critical thinking on its head, which means that we're not doing critical thinking. We're just parroting what the State Department wants us to say because fuck questions and fuck uh, thinking critically and fuck uh, questioning authority. Also, it's going to be the most boring font that you've ever seen in your life. Just basic typewriter shit. Nothing stylized, nothing cool, nothing to kind of, even if it's like harken, even if it was a question mark that harkened back to the days of old school journalism, that would be something. Bellingcat is the opposite of the uh, comic book character named Question, ironically. Um, he was, uh, he's basically a superhero that's an investigative journalist, right? Like his, 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 he wears a mask, but the mask is just like a blank face. Um, he can see through it and, sh and stuff, but in order to get the mask off, he needs like a special spray that essentially disintegrates it because it's supposed to look like like skin. I think he's kind of he's he's a little he's a little crazy, um, but he doesn't trust authority. And, you know, a lot of the, the way they frame him in the comic books is 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 sort of like a conspiracy theorist that ends up being right. So, so essentially, he's an investigative journalist. He's got above average IQ. Um, he's got some gadgets and stuff, uh, and uh, he's worked with the Justice League. He's worked with the Suicide Squad, but and then in the animated series, if you're if you're a fan of the Justice League animated series, he was featured in that cartoon. I, I, it's, actually, he's one of the he's one of like his investigation is like a key plot point in 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 the show, um, and he's voiced by the delightful and wonderful Jeffrey Combs. If you're a Star Trek nerd like I am. Uh, Jeffrey Combs is is Wayun from uh, DS9, and he plays uh, Brunt uh, also on DS9. He's just fantastic, just a just an overall fantastic actor that doesn't get enough credit. Um, and he's done like a lot of voice acting, but he plays the question. And Bellingcat is essentially the opposite of that in every which in every which way in every which way, right? The question is. An investigative journalist. He's a critical thinker, right? He doesn't trust authority. He doesn't trust the official narratives that come out. He he wears a trench coat uh, and a fedora. Nobody in Bell and Cat has even heard of a fedora. Their logo is an upside down. Quite they, like they are the anti. They are anti everything this fucking character stands for. <laughs> Let me look at some comments. Over on the Rock Fans, Holly joined the stream. Good to see you, Holly. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Holly calls it the, the web of deception. It's all about the narrative. 
uh follow the money and and uh ned is ev- net is everywhere yeah uh the uh, washington post has a cia contract they do yeah actually because um what's his fucking face jeff bezos has cia contracts uh so it would be very fishy if he wasn't parroting the cia narrative as well you know so uh yeah they they definitely have cia contracts and and i mean you know again if you kind of read what washington post has to say you don't for for somebody that was trying to empower the working class as Bernie Sanders was, uh, in 2016, you don't write 16 articles in the course of one day trying to shit on the dude if you don't have objectives from the CIA and the State Department that want to keep the working class divided and impoverished. All right. We're going to move to the next story. Okay, so this one's going to be kind of a little bit of a short one, but it's 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 an important one for sure. Uh, there was a whistleblower who just got silenced on Twitter. I think her account is suspended on Twitter. Uh, her name is uh, uh, Rebecca Jones. And back in uh, May of last year, there's really only one article that was that was written about it, um, and it's part of the reason why she was suspended from Twitter. Uh, she blew the whistle on uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, or as I've nicknamed him, Ron Dick Santis, because he's from Florida and he's also a dick. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, feel free to tweet that at him or whatever the fuck. I don't really give a shit. Uh, but I like to call him Ron Dick Santis. I feel like that's a very funny nickname. Uh, and I'm kind of half proud of that, <laughs> to be honest. Um but uh, she blew the whistle because he was trying to adjust death rates in Florida, specifically COVID death rates, not just any death rate, uh, COVID death rates in Florida. He was he was trying to decrease those numbers, falsify the reports so he could justify opening the state. He could justify opening venues, uh, restaurants. I mean, and then you kind of saw it happen, right? Like people were flooding the beaches. Uh, spring break was still happening. You know, people, I mean, I, I was, I was hearing of people doing shows down in Florida, like Florida was just, um, uh, uh, just like a, a nightmare situation. Uh, and I'm so sorry to anybody that lives in that state, uh, voluntarily or involuntarily, like, yeah. Anyway, uh, so she blew the whistle and, and by the way, Ron DeSantis doing this, Ron DeSantis doing this is pretty much the exact same thing that both Andrew Cuomo and Gretchen Whitmer got caught doing, uh, which, by the way, those stories have been fucking buried. Because you don't you don't really hear about Andrew Cuomo and his fucking nursing home uh, death toll fraud and Gretchen Whitmer's nursing home death toll fraud. And I wouldn't be surprised if fucking Pennsylvania's governor came out and said, yeah, we fucked with the, some of the numbers because we didn't want it to look as bad. Now, he blatantly came out. I mean, it was very clear as to why Dick Santos was doing it um, because he just wanted to reopen the state because, you know, the economy is more important than human lives. That's just how these fucking Republicans think. Or, or that was sort of the way that the Republican narrative was going. Um. But Cuomo and Whitmer, they don't get they don't have that excuse of, well, we just wanted to open up our state or whatever. Like they were like, oh, we didn't want the numbers to seem bad because then Trump would basically say ter- terrible things about the Democratic Party. That was actually that was literally Cuomo's excuse to the DOJ when they did the investigation. He li- like that was his literal fucking thing that he said. So Rebecca Jones blows a whistle on this. She's, she's basically saying that, you know, hey, they're falsifying these reports. They want to release um, numbers that are way lower than what they actually are. And uh, that's fucked up. That's not OK. You know, people are dying. This is a big deal. Um, and so the Miami Herald wrote an article. And this is where the trouble with Twitter comes in. 
So Twitter suspended her account for showing the Miami Herald article and says that she shared it 50 times. They don't really say in what period of time did she share it 50 times. Now, if this is the only article written about you and and your your whistleblowing, I get it. I understand. Yeah, you're going to get that story out any which way that you possibly can. Right? That's that's just what that's just what you you're going to do. So, if between May of 2020 and let's say June of 2020, you tweeted this out 50 times, I get it. You want the story to be heard. Some something like CNN isn't going to grab hold of this. It, you, you know, like they're, they're they're this they don't they don't like whistleblowers on corporate media. Bellingcat ain't gonna do no story on this. So now we're, what we're looking at is censorship used to cover up, uh, basically how corrupt the United States government really is from from the top to the bottom. And and it basically, uh, you know, is more proof of the argument of, hey, uh, guess what? We need we got to restart this whole fucking thing. The system doesn't work. We got to we got to do something completely fucking different. So they use censorship as a cover up. They covered up the story. And how many stories? I mean, I, I feel like I'm I'm just uncovering story after story that that's just like been covered up but fortunately now um thanks to social media thanks to the, the the you know more more lefty news organizations things aren't being silenced the way that they are uh you know like like the Tulsa race massacre was was covered up the the move bombings were covered up you know uh fact that America wanted to nuke Taiwan has been covered up I was just telling a friend of mine about that the other day and he was like why why would they do that what would be the purpose of it and it was like yeah to stop communism they were like if there's no islets that they can take over and spread their agenda to then communism is 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 and he's like but that's crazy why would they and it's like yeah man that's that's how the sociopaths think like they tried to get eisenhower and again that that came out very recently that they were trying to do that ellsberg revealed that it, it revealed that I mean, how much has been covered up, you know, and now it's starting to become harder for them to do that. Now we know that Ron DeSantis, Andrew Cuomo, Gretchen Whitmer, and and probably countless other fucking governors in an attempt to keep their states open, in an attempt to, oh, we don't want the Democrats to look bad in front of Trump, covered up a bunch of debts. And and that and and censorship is being used as a, as a way to cover up, right? The the story did get out, but it's now been her her Twitter's been suspended. So how is she gonna how is she gonna talk to people? Not that Twitter's the only way to talk to people, but but it is it it makes it harder. The reach has now been been severed a little bit. So now censorship is basically being used. I mean, you, you saw it in the way that, you know, people like Graham Elwood are being demonetized. Lee Camp is being shadow banned. Ron Placone's channel is being shadow banned. My videos are being taken down. Fiorella's videos are being taken down. Nico House's videos are being taken down. You know, they're getting deleted from some of these larger platforms, which is why we go to Rockfin and Odyssey, because they're going to help us be seen a little bit more. But... You know, my videos were, I mean, my two of my videos were taken down. Um, th well, three of my videos were taken down. One was a warning. But, um, you know, and and all, all I did was expose Time Magazine talking about collusion within the Democratic Party to get Joe Biden elected. And that is a word that they use in that article. I'm sure a bunch of you watching the stream now, or if you're listening to the replay, I'm sure you guys remember me reading that article. I fucking literally read it and they deleted that video and gave me a strike on my channel. I mean, that's that censorship used to cover it up. Are, are people going to go back and reread that time article? Unlikely, unlikely. 
but they might watch a video talking about the time article and now they can't do that unless you're on rockfin or odyssey because that's 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 the only way to see them it's the only way to see those videos so they're so they're covering it up again they're covering up the fact that fucking dick santis is trying to you know lie about numbers to open a state up when when it wasn't and you and this is this is a separate thing i, I want to do a bigger video on like the the hypocrisies of fauci and the cdc and and just how like some of the big corporate unions uh handle this situation but you you kind of look at the way that the american teachers uh, american federation of teachers reacted when trump wanted to reopen schools versus how biden wanted to reopen schools you know when trump wanted to reopen schools oh my god this is too dangerous and here's all of the things that schools would have to do in order to open properly biden wants to reopen schools they go yeah we understand that the science says community spread comes from opening the schools up again and we've been doing this dance of opening and virtual opening virtual opening virtual and it's really terrible for the kids and even though we should probably have been focusing on a virtual curriculum this whole time um you know but the democrats want people to get back to work joe biden wants you to get back to work because he wants to put america back to work because that's what he's still we're gonna say hey let's open the schools again even though the science says the opposite i know we said we'd lead by science but you know hey how about this shut the fuck up and go fuck yourself uh just listen to what we you know like that's you see that and again this is the same thing i'm actually surprised that cnn hasn't picked up this story because it goes it goes right into spreading divide between the Republicans and the Democrats. But again, I think the Andrew Cuomo and Gretchen, Gretchen Whitmer story were too big, so they have to ignore this as well. But hey, fucking we don't. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Let's look at your comments. Aha! Little love for Jeffrey Combs in the comments too. Always good to see some love for Jeffrey Combs. Brunt FCA, yes, Holly. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. Uh, you caught. Uh, I'm, I'm glad there's somebody that enjoys DS9 as much as I do. My 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 roommate and I watched that whole show last year, and and I feel like we're the only two people in the world uh, that uh, that have that really enjoy that that show. Uh. <laughs> cynical girl holly had to relay a cynical girl comment uh death santis yes yes uh that is a, that is another good one death santis dick santis and death santis they're two different versions they're two different versions right when he's in his own office by himself he's death santis but when he's out in public and he's giving speeches he's dick santis very similar how um you know you have chancellor palpatine and dart sidious they're the same person uh, just, you know, one wears a, a cloak and the other one pretends to be a politician. Very similar to fucking Ron DeSantis. <laughs> uh, although I don't think Ron DeSantis is, is, is as powerful as as Sidious. Um, Cynical so Girl says, I told someone at, at our neighborhood store yesterday that I was bent on leaving Florida to move to Michigan, and he said they have a crazy governor. They do, but so so does Florida. <laughs> Florida also has a crazy uh, governor. A dingo ate me, baby. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Rebecca Jones is a shiro. Holly Horn, yes, absolutely. She did. She again. It, this is like going up against. You, you know, when you kind of break the stories about this sort of stuff, it is going up against like uh, a, a a pop culture hero almost. You know what I mean? It is it is going up against almost like a pop culture hero because politicians in America are held to such ridiculous. They're, they're put on these ridiculous pedestals. That's something I wanted to write about, too, is is sort of the hero worship of, of politicians in this country and how it's kind of destroyed politics um, and critical thinking and, and things of that sort. That's that's something that I, I will I will write soon. I have a bunch of these essays I want to write um, and 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 put out there, but uh, yeah. All right, moving to the moving to the final story of the hour. 
very good news about Puerto Rico, you guys. Uh, good, good news, bad news kind of situation, but I, I think this is pretty cool news. Um, last week, last week, Puerto Rico went on a general strike. They went on a general strike uh, to protest the control of Puerto Rico's electrical grid uh, by the U.S. slash Canadian company called Luma Energy. So you guys might remember that there was a hurricane that came through, kind of really wrecked their electrical grid, and Puerto Rico has been kind of struggling um, in terms of that for, for since that hurricane. And and there, you know, um, Elon Musk went down there and he did some shit. That was before everybody realized that Elon Musk was a giant tool. Um, because at that point, even I was like, holy, that's pretty fucking cool, man. Like, okay, cool. You seem like a benevolent fucking uh, uh, CEO of a corporation. Maybe you understand that, like, yeah, you can't just do evil shit all the time. That you, if, when you have this wealth, you got to kind of do something uh, positive with it. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I gave him some praise when praise was due. But, you know, he turned out to be a giant monstrous shit hurdle. But, uh, so they're 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 protesting. There's a mass general strike, and the unions in Puerto Rico are actually in favor of this. Whereas larger unions in America are not in favor of a general strike. Randy Weingarten, uh, the aforementioned American Federation of Teachers, the AFT, she when there was a big call for a general strike coming out last year, she basically said, "No, no, no. We should just let the courts handle it." The courts will do the right thing. When it's like, what? You're 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 the president of a fucking union, but she sits on the board of the DNC. And guess what? The Democrats don't like fucking general strikes, because when you have a general strike, and when they're successful, and we've seen successful ones, like in 1934, um, and I did a whole fucking show about it. There's an hour and twenty some odd minutes of material that I wrote. Uh, it, there's a video about this on my channel. It's called, I think it's called why we need a general strike or something. So if you want to see that whole show, that, that whole show is there for you guys on the rock fins, on the YouTubes, on the odysseys. Um, but basically in 1934, there were a series of major general strikes and they won. They tried to use violence. Well, the socialists fought back. They tried to smear them in the media. Well, people didn't really buy it because they were watching what was going on in their streets. Um, so eventually that led to FDR approving the Wagner Act, which legitimized unions. It gave them more power. It gave them the ability to collectively bargain and minimum wage went up during the Great Depression. P minimum wage went up significantly to help the lives of the American worker. And that was that that way for about a decade. Right. And then the war happened. And then after the war, there was a big fear. There was a big fear that the working class was going to get empowered again and they would like, you know, get basic needs covered and shit. So the Taft-Hartley Act was written, and another Democrat by the name of Harry Truman, who was a high school dropout, uh, became president because FDR died, and he didn't really want the job. He's responsible for dropping two nuclear bombs in Japan, also gutting the working class. Uh, so this guy's just all around a piece of shit. Uh, and, he, and he approved it. He sided, with, he sided with Republicans, and he approved it. And that's what killed the unions. That's what killed the ability to strike. That's what killed organized labor in America. Um, and th and that's also why you see like corporate corporate unions like the AFL, which the AFL has a history of being garbage as a union. Uh, they were racist, sexist. They only wanted to like uh, represent white tradesmen. And IWW was like, hey, that's foolish, and you're gonna you're gonna kind of kill the labor movement this way. Uh, and, and they did. They shot themselves in the foot. The police unions are not on our side. All of these unions don't do what unions are supposed to do. They they do what state departments want them to do. They, they parrot the narratives of the State Department. Uh, they parrot the narratives of the Democratic Party. And they suppress workers. They don't collectively bargain on their behalf. And that comes from the Taft-Harley Act. So in America, these unions uh, don't actually do what unions are supposed to do. Um, they they're they're basically trying to sheep herd the working class into the Democratic Party. But in Puerto Rico, the unions are like, fucking yeah, man, <laughs> let's do this. This is awesome. You know, so uh, 
So that's awesome. And, and look, the part of the thing is like, I know there might be some people watching that are like, hey, what's wrong with a, an American and a Can uh, American slash Canadian company going down there to help them with their electrical grid? Uh, and the electrical grid before in Puerto Rico was state was was state run. It was it was run by the government of Puerto Rico. It was a it was a public utility. Uh, and because because of, you know, relief efforts and this, that and the third, they kind of lost control of their public utility. And now it's become privatized. And we saw what happens when the uh, electrical grid is privatized. We saw what happened in February in Texas. That whole state got wrecked. That whole state got wrecked because what are what are private companies interested in? Are they interested in providing electricity in the most efficient and cost-effective and environmentally friendly manner? Absolutely fucking not. They are interested in making fucking money. And that's what they did in Texas. The grid got overloaded. They didn't have safety or, or any sort of backups. And that whole state was in turmoil. People, And then they were still charging people. And that's what that's what happened here, right? Like that's what happened in Puerto Rico too. Um, and you know that it's not like if people can't pay or their grid goes down again, it, you know, it. it I, ho I hope this doesn't happen, but let's say there was another natural disaster and the grid goes down, you know that people are still going. It's going to be the Texas situation all over again because, and it's going to be even worse because guess what? Puerto Rico is full of brown people. And guess what America doesn't give a shit about? Black and brown people and indigenous people and women and LGBT. Anything that's a minority, America doesn't give a fuck about. Anyone that's a minority. And Puerto Rico counts for that. So you really think that America, if, if something goes wrong, is going to be like, oh man, we have, a, we have our own private corporation down there. We should go help these people and see how we can help Luma Energy or whatever. No, they're going to be like, okay, how do we bail out Luma Energy Fuck Puerto Rico. How do we bail out Luma Energy? There's a lot of problems with Luma itself, too. Um, their app doesn't have a, a Spanish-speaking function, which is just a dick move, which, again, goes into, like, yeah, corp corporations help with colonization because when they come and take over, they don't, they don't, you know, put their apps or their websites or any of their, any of their fucking... Um, uh, advertising or what have yous in the native language of the country that they're going in to take over the utility or whatever. So this is just all part of the colonial thing, right? Uh, forcefully make them assimilate into English. Well, Puerto Rico doesn't speak English. That's not its main language. I mean, people in Puerto Rico probably speak English, but that's not its main language. So they don't have a Spanish option. And then their price differences became astronomical. So check this out. Uh, before, Luma was about $117 a month uh, for electricity. And then it went to $669 after Luma took over. Why? It's, it's not like the people completely changed the way that they were running their electricity. It's not like they were like, oh, well, the Americans are here. Flip on all the things and let's run the AC nonstop. Let's go crazy with it. No, they were, they probably ran the thing the same way they run the thing all the time so that their electrical bill isn't, you, you know, crazy different all the time. It's the same consistent thing so that they can budget properly for it. it that's a seven time jump in price. You don't really see that too often, except when you have deregulated corporate interests. When corporations are completely deregulated and there's no rules, they can do whatever the fuck they want. They can price gouge you day in and day out. And they'll say, well, supply and demand, baby, supply and demand. Yeah, well, you're not doing that supply and demand properly. There is a demand for it, and there's also an overwhelming amount of supply. So why would you spike up the charge for the supply as if it's going to run out?
So this creates, a, and then this creates this creates a scarcity mentality because then people go, oh wait, are the prices going up because there there there's 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 not enough power to go around, or did they have to you know ration out the power? What's going on? No, just a corporation that wants more money than the uh, than than you know the, uh, a, a nation has. Puerto Rico's finances, too, are not controlled by Puerto Rico. They're controlled by uh, an oversight board that is connected to the United States. So all of this stuff goes back to the United States is controlling the finances in Puerto Rico and the energy grid in Puerto Rico. Um, and they're not going to help them if something go they're going to try to bail their own corporations out and get them out of Puerto Rico. So really what this strike is, this strike that's happening in Puerto Rico it's a pushback against colonialism. It's a general strike against U.S. colonialism. Puerto Rico should be its own state. And the reason why Puerto Rico is in financial turmoil now is a little bit partly due to the hurricane, due to, due to natural disasters, which I, you can't really hold that against them. Uh, you know, uh, But it's also because of U.S. interference. It's also because of colonial interference. It's also because of imperialism. And the countries that enact imperialism and fuck up a country's another country's economics, yeah, you should pay for that. That is wrong. And these strikes are showing that. So really, if you want to help Puerto Rico get back up on its feet, America should give Puerto Rico the financial aid that it needs because America is partly responsible for putting Puerto Rico in that financial uh, bind so to speak. All right. Let me look at your comments real quick. We'll look quiet over on Odyssey. We got to get those comments going over on Odyssey. Ba -ba -ba -ba, we're... And Dingo ate me, baby. Uh, says, yeah, Randy is a shit lib DNC tool. Yeah, she sits on, she sits on the board, I believe, of the DNC. So it totally makes sense that she would, she would be that way. Uh, Dingo ate me, baby. Also says, many union and organizers were socialist, communists, and McCarthyism helped, uh, and and labor suffered. That, that's another good point. That's another good point. And we kind of see that sort of stuff happening again today. Um, we, we, we see how McCarthyism pushes, you know, it basically kills any sort of organization. Uh, there are people that claim that the Black Lives Matter movement is a Russian in infiltration plant to destabilize America, as if America ne has never been racist ever, right? Like, <laughs> it just completely ignores that. McCarthyism is, I, I would argue to say McCarthyism might be the best propaganda tool that's that's ever been invented um yeah i i would i would say it's the bad that that idea might need a little bit more exploring um but i i i would say mccarthyism is 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 pretty solid it's pretty up there uh you know to create this fictionalized enemy that no matter how whatever uh problems there are whatever the problem is if 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 it if it comes down to being like, oh, this is a capitalism problem, uh-uh, this weird enemy we invented that happens to be Russia is the problem. Like, it is, and and you're right, it, it, you know, that McCarthyism, any sort of union that that uh, lined itself up with socialist or communist ideologies were immediately seen as a threat. So, you know, what are you going to do? You, you, you can't outwardly be um, a, a, a socialist or a communist or else you'll be seen as a traitor to the country. Um you know the the Rosenbergs were 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 killed because of that. That's that's a story. I think I'm I'm gonna probably cover that tomorrow because I I do want to talk about Ethel Rosenberg a little bit more. Um, Zozovix, uh, fucking money is the fucking money is the best money. It multiplies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, Holly says IWW didn't sign contracts. Uh, they felt contracts were exploitation. Yeah, it's all legalese. You, you, you either have the job or you don't. And, you know, don't be stupid. I feel like, um, you know, what, what, what more do you need? I feel like every time I read a contract for work, I'm always looking for ways that I'm going to get fucked. 
Whereas if there wasn't a contract and it was just all upfront and, and open and honest, we, we don't, we wouldn't have to worry about this sort of shit. Uh, Holly says we will not comply. Absolutely. Um, Holly also says people died in heat and no refrigeration for medicine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that happened in Puerto Rico as well. You know, you, you I think everybody focused on the fact that Trump went down there and threw some fucking paper towels uh, to, to people that were like, no, we need food. And he was like, boom, paper towel. Lee, Lee camp has a great joke about that. Uh, that whole thing. It, but you know, no one really focused on the real problem. they, they just concentrated on the uh, the whole paper towel thing, and that became that became headline news. Which is like, really, that's the fucking headline. That's fucking crazy. Um, cool. Well, we're gonna wrap things up here. Slightly shorter stream, I suppose. Uh, but uh, if you guys have any other further questions, comments, or concerns, you can feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer a couple of them after I do my little little wrap up spiel here uh if you enjoyed today's show please make sure you hit the like button please make sure that you share this out uh and wherever you're watching if you're watching on odyssey rockfin facebook uh youtube um if you're listening to the audio version of this uh please make sure you are subscribed to the platforms that you're watching this on the more subscribers on any of these platforms mean the more people get to get to see this stuff uh, get to join in on the streams, uh, leave more comments, and it makes a more fun interactive uh, live stream. So uh, please make sure you are subscribed to these channels. Please make sure that you share. Sharing is a huge way that you can help. Uh, that's, that's probably one of the biggest ways that you can help because it gets it gets the content out there and more people see this stuff. So that's a huge way to help. Um, if you are on stable financial ground and would like to make a donation or become a sustaining member by making monthly contributions, which gets you bonus prizes, uh, you can do so over on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com slash donate. You can also leave a tip over on the Rockfin channel. Uh, the, the tips are greatly appreciated. Uh, and if you're over on, um, if you're over on Odyssey, I believe you can hit the support and, and, and throw some library credits over to the channel, over to the video, help some people, help more people see the content. Uh, you can tip the channel over on Odyssey as well. Uh, but there's very, various different ways to make one-time donations on that site as well. And you will see on the donation page, I have a statement of transparency so you can see exactly what you are donating to. Um, meaning, you know, I, I need a, I, a certain amount of money to ma help make this thing my full time job. Um, and once it become once it gets closer and closer to that, the more uh, more I'll be able to do more, more things I'll be able to create. So it kind of gives you an idea of like what goals I'm trying to achieve um, through sustaining memberships and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, that is on my website as well. And if, and if you ever miss a video, you, you, you ever miss a live stream or anything like that, uh, you can join my email list at krishmohanhaha.substack.com. Uh, that'll pretty much give you a list of all the videos and podcasts I've released, and it'll tell you when I'm, I have shows coming up, uh, both virtual and in-person shows, because I, be, I will be booking some of those shows uh, soon. I will be booking some of those shows soon. So, um, I, I, you know... Uh, Join that email list over at krishmohanhaha.substack.com. Uh, yeah, so those are those are all of the uh, uh, announcements. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, Thomas, thank you for thank you for the the contribution uh, over on Odyssey. A uh, uh, hundred credits over on Odyssey. That's very kind of you. Uh, and it is it is nice to be streaming on Odyssey as well. Uh, Thomas says nice to nice to see you streaming with us. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, very kind of you to, 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 to do that. Um, and uh, uh, Zozovic says, you should see a doctor for shorter streams. <laughs> I sure will. I sure will. I know it's, it's weird. Am I okay? I, I, I didn't do an hour and a half. I didn't do an hour and a half today. Is am, am I doing okay? I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, are 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 any of us doing okay? Now you're making me question uh, life itself, uh, going into into an existential 
uh, frenzy here. <laughs> but you guys are all uh, at stable, fi stable financial ground where the rich keep their horses. Yes. Uh, if you if you got horses uh, and would like to donate them, you can do so on my website. <laughs> you can donate horses on my website. All right, you guys are getting ridiculous. I love it, but you guys are getting ridiculous. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, you guys are you guys were all fantastic. We had Cynical Girl, Holly, Zozovic, Sadingo ate me, baby, uh, Thomas over on the Odyssey. Uh, thank you guys for for hanging out, tuning in, and um, I'll be doing another stream tomorrow, uh, same time, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, or is that 2 p.m. Pacific? Uh, new stories again. And remember, next Monday, there won't be a stream because I'm heading over to Columbus to uh, to, to, to to be in front of people for the Home Run for Assange event. So uh, if you're in the Columbus area, uh, come on out. Come hang out. Why, why wouldn't you do that? Though That's crazy that you wouldn't come hang out. Uh, and Jay, uh, Jay Ganatha says you, you do okay for sure. Well, I appreciate that. That's, that's very kind of it. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and, and all right, let's, let's wrap this th thing up. Uh, until next time, folks, we'll see you on the road. Have a good night. Bye guys. <laughs>